Hello everyone, it's Brightmaster here, and today I have a Lord of the Rings set to review. This is the 9471 Urukai Army from 2012. This set comes with 257 pieces, was rated for ages 8 to 14, and cost you $30 back when it was in stores. This is a great set, and it's very similar to Battle Packs from Star Wars, and it comes with a lot of minifigures, which is absolutely amazing. You get four Urukai, one Rohan soldier, and the and Aomer, which is great, and of course, you can attach this to Helm's Deep, which I will show you when I do the Helm's Deep video, which should be coming up soon because that set is ready to be reviewed. So, yeah, let's look at the instructions to be the first part of the review. Alright, so here are the instructions, and they are pretty decent size for something like this. And it comes with a total of 76 pages, including the back, so a lot of steps of building. And back here it advertises the Hobbit Wave, well, the first one to be exact for the Unexpected Journey film. Back here it tells you you can win a Lego set. Over here it advertises the Lord of the Rings video game. Here it advertises the Lego Lord of the Rings website. The Battle of Helm's Deep, a great set. One that I will be reviewing soon. Here, there's the checklist for all of the minifigures that come in the first Lord of the Rings wave. Here's the piece count. And it does come with that little box that tells you what pieces you need for each step. So it is really easy to follow. And you should have no issues with this set whatsoever or its instructions. So, yeah, that's it for them. Alright, so here are the minifigures. And there are a total of six. And they all look absolutely amazing. The Lord of the Rings theme and the Hobbit theme as well are themes that always come with an excellent selection of minifigures. They're full of detail, have some really nice molds. And many of them are exclusive because... Of course, this series wasn't around for that long. So the first minifigure we'll look at here is Eomer, who is, of course, Theoden's nephew. And he's going to enter the battle at Helm's Deep later on with Gandalf, after it seems like all hope is lost. And that's what he looks like. He's an exclusive minifigure. It looks absolutely amazing. I really like the shield they gave him. He has a spear here. It does have a reverie tip, which is causes it to... It's a little bit bent, but doesn't really bother me as much. It's not very noticeable. Here you can see he has a really nice looking torso and some really nice chain mail there. He has a green cape which is great and a really nice helmet mold. And the printing on this helmet here is exclusive. They have a, an exclusive one for Theoden, the Rohan soldier, and Aomer. So, you know, very nice minifigure. And over here is his horse. Very nice as well. Just your regular 2012 to present style horse, so it does have some more posability, so you can move the legs up if you wish and make the head move down. It is a little bit stiff, it's brown, so I'm going to be a bit more careful with it. And over here you can see it does have a saddle here and a sword, just in case Aomer needs a different weapon to fight. And over here you have the Rohan soldier. Very nice minifigure as well. No leg printing, but some pretty nice torso printing. He does have the regular sized bow and arrow, which is different to the one that Legolas and the elves have. And he has the same helmet mold as Aomer, but it doesn't have any printing on it, making it exclusive to him. And here he has a quiver full of arrows. Um, over here we have an Urukai soldier, and he does not have any chest plate armor. But he does have a very nice looking shield, which is of course made specifically for the Urukai, as well as a sword and helmet. And I think it's done really, really well. I do really like the printing on his torso area, belt area, and legs. And if you lift off his helmet, you can see his face. He has the white hand of Sarm there. And on the back, you can see that he has no white hand of Sarm. And that's probably before he gets the, the little mark on his face. And the Urukai themselves, they are all identical, except some have different accessories or they have hair instead of the helmet. But their head, torso, and legs are always the same. And right over here we have this other Urukai. Very nice looking minifigure as well. Has the same sword and shield as the last one, same torso, head, and legs, of course, as the last one as well. But he does have some hair, which looks pretty nice as well. I know there's that one who gets up on the rock and basically instructs them the yeah, others one to charge. I think the, who, that's who this one is supposed to be. Again, very nice minifigure. I really like the look of it. 
over here we have this Urukai minifigure who is the same as the last two, except he does have some chest plate armor, which is really nice to see. It makes him look really beefy and everything. And here, of course, is the helmet, just like the last one. And he also has a very large battle axe, which is amazing. And I think that these really look good with these minifigures, and it's a pretty large weapon and makes him look extremely dangerous. So, this minifigure is the same as the next, so I'm only going to show you that one. And that basically wraps up the minifigures. They're really good in my opinion and definitely are a good addition to your Rohan army. Alright, so here's the Ballista that is included in the set. It's a very nice build. And of course it has some wheels here that are basically some 4x4 four four plates, the circular kind. And over here you can see that it's has some stickers here to make it look like it's all made out of wood because this of course was made from all of the trees that were in Isengard and Fangorn Forest. And over here there's another piece like that. And this is where the shooting function is. So you see there's this red piece right there and of course they always try to make it really obvious for you. I wish they would have made it a bit more discreet. I don't know why they have to make it as obvious but I guess I'm not Lego. I can't really say why. But you do is you just push here and then two flick fire missiles fire out and this is what they look like this and they're supposed to attach with strings onto the wall in Helm's Deep and are supposed to help bring ladders up so yeah that's basically it for that so here's the wall piece that comes in the set and of course this is supposed to be a part of the Helm's Deep wall I think that looks really, really nice, and I think that they captured that part of the wall well, and it really fits in with the rest of the build, Helm's Deep, if you do have the set, but it works just as well on its own. So right here you can see there's a little window, and up here there's a flag and a torch right here just to make sure that you can see a little bit during this rainy and dark night. Over here they have a bit of moss, which looks really good, very accurate to the actual wall in the film. And here, if you turn it around, you can see that there are peg holes here, and peg holes here with some pegs actually inside them, so that's if you want to expand your wall further and buy more sets. Unfortunately, I did not buy any sets. Now, looking back on it, I should, because these sets are pretty pricey nowadays. But anyway, here is a little staircase right here, and that's where uh, you can imagine the Legolas using the uruk shield and riding down the staircase, which is a very funny scene. And down here there's a little area where you can, I guess, seek refuge or something like that. Here, of course, is the little walkway where you can station some of your minifigures. Unfortunately, they don't have any of the elf minifigures that are with Haldir's group, but you can put a Rohan soldier up there, or multiple if you have multiple sets. Over here there is a catapult, which is your standard small version. And they give you three little rocks for ammunition. You just load them up in there and then you just fire them. And it works really well. Uh, that one actually just r went right in front of me, so I'm going to pick it up. And just put it back here. Another nice thing about this catapult is that Lego thought, well, what if you want to move it? You want to get more troops up here. So it's pretty easy to remove it. They attach it to some jumper plates, really smooth, really easy, and you just take jumper plates away and you just got a, a larger wall area, which is really nice. I like that they give you that option. And yeah, the flag can be taken off easily, the torch as well if you want. And I really like the first tile-ness, if that's even a word, for this. So yeah, that's basically it for this set. Alright, so that's basically it for this set. I really do like it, and if you have the Battle of Helm's Deep, there's no reason why you shouldn't get this. And even if you don't have that set, this is a really nice army builder pack. And if you want to have some Urukai, you want to have a Rohan soldier, you want to have Aomer, who's a really important character, especially in the second and third books, you should definitely get this set. And nowadays this set is going for a very, very high price. You're looking at... $90 or above, which is extremely insane thinking that after thinking that I got this set for $30 when it was back in stores, I think in 2013 I got this, but I would spend $50 or 
yeah, around that for this set. You can probably find a good deal on this, but please do not overpay that much for this. This is not that big. You're going to get up to the point where you're spending 50 cents per part, and that's not something I think that is wise. So, yeah, that's basically it for this set. See you all later for more Lord of the Rings reviews. Bye.